Ciao everyone! In this video, we're going to take a look at the sound fields module contained inside Inside 2. The sound field meter panel feature a stereo vector scope and a surround scope meter. We're going to take a look at the surround scope meter first, as I have a 7.1 session open up. The surround scope is a display of the amplitude of all the surround channels. This display focuses on the spatial relationship of the channels while still illustrating the amplitude of each channel. Through the surround scope we can monitor the phase relationship between all the channels and this is very useful because it will display a red alert when there is a negative correlation or phase cancellation taking place. This is something that we want to be very mindful especially for down mixing our surround mix in order to avoid any phase decorrelation. With the surround display we also have access to the surround amplitude meter which plots rays within 360 degrees readout of all the signals. We also can see the surround balance indicator which display a tracking in dots, this little green dot, in different locations, again giving you a 360 degrees readout and the location of the dots pretty much represents the sum surround location of all the channel. Other than that, as I said before, these little red lights that lights up sporadically give us an indication of the surround correlations. In other words, the cell bordering the 360 degrees plot of the surround scope represents a given channel relationship. Only prominent signals that are significantly out of phase will trigger the alert. Other than that, these little surround lines that are around the center represent our meter scale. Now, the rings within the meter represent our RMS signal level of each of the channels. Signal below 60 dB RMS will not be registered as vectors of the surround meter, so I generally want to be mindful of every signal above the minus 60 dB RMS. Moving along, still in the sound field module of Isotope Insight 2, we have the vector scope. A vector scope is nonetheless a meter that juxtaposes two channels of stereo signal on an X and a Y axis in order to display the similarity or differences between the two channels. A mono signal will produce a straight vertical line, while a signal within a wide stereo image will produce a more horizontal shape. A vector scope can be used to monitor the stereo width of a signal while mixing or mastering, or in this case monitoring a film mix in stereo. It can also help to highlight potential issues of phase correlation and cancellation between the left and the right channel. The following view modes are available within our vector scope. Polar sample, polar level, and less adieu. The polar sample vector scope plots dots per sample, and it uses a polar coordinate display, which is very useful in highlighting the stereo image of the incoming signal. Now, all the patterns that will appear within the 4 to 5 degrees safe line represents in phase signal, while all the patterns outside of this line represent signal out of phase. The polar level vector scope shows the stereo energy of a recording. It plots rays on a polar coordinate display that represents sample's average. The length of the rays represents the amplitude while the angle of the rays represents their position in the stereo image. Again, rays within the 45 degrees safe line represents in-phase audio, while everything beyond these lines represents audio which is out of phase. Lastly, we got the Lissajou vector scope. Like the outer vector scope, it plots the sample dots on a traditional oscilloscope display. Typically, the Lissajou works very well for stereo recordings and it produces a random pattern, which are traditionally displayed taller rather than wide. The vertical pattern means that the left and the right channel are very similar, approaching almost mono, which is a vertical line. Whether the horizontal patterns means that the two channels are very different, which can result in out of phase and mono compatibility problems. So it's very important that you learn how to properly read this meter. There are two more things to add in order for you to understand how properly this display works. And the first thing is the balance meter. Now underneath each one of this display there is an horizontal bar meter which averages the stereo location of the input signal. So it gives us a good impression of the overall balance between left and right. On the right side of our sound field we have the correlation meter which is generally used to ensure that the left and the right signal will sum properly in mono without any cancellation of frequency. Generally, this vertical bar meter gives us a good reading and indicates the amount of similarities or correlations between the left and the right channel. When the two signals are exactly the same or in phase, the reading is going to be close to the plus one. 
when the two signal instead is going to be out of phase, our reading is going to be close to the negative one. So to conclude this video, always make sure whether you're working in surround or in stereo, that your vector scope is going to give you a good reading to make sure that you're not going to fall into any phase cancellation problem when you're going to be summing your signal in mono. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Ciao.